Western military analysts say Russian troops have made little progress in their invasion in recent days. The front lines shifted slightly as Russians and Ukrainian forces trade patches of territory. Many places in the path of the, the advancing and retreating armies are empty of residents, but some people are staying behind, holding out hope for peace, as DW's Matthias Berlinger found out in a town near Mykolaiv. A village erased. Rybuske is right on the front line. Virtually no house remains undamaged. The village once had 2,000 inhabitants. Now only a handful are left. Halina Ilyushenka is one of them. It's calm now. We're resting a little. But a few days ago it was terrible. Bombs were falling, shooting, fire, things falling down. A bomb fell down in my courtyard, 12 metres from my bedroom. There was a loud bang and fire. I'm surprised my house didn't burn down. That's how it goes here. What she calls calm means just that fighting is less intense. The village was overrun by the Russians and then retaken by the Ukrainians. I don't judge the soldiers, neither the Russians nor the Ukrainians. It's not their fault. They're forced to do this. She lives here with her son, who is mentally ill. She says she has not left because she fears not being able to take care of him elsewhere. When the shelling starts, they hide inside the house. This is our little corner. I'm afraid of basements. I was told there are basements where I could go. But here in our street, a woman was buried while she was in her basement. I'm not going there. When shelling starts, this is where we sit together. Meanwhile, she tries to make the best of the situation. That's where the bomb dropped. There was a big crater. I filled it with earth and planted potatoes there. Halina was born during World War II. Now she spends the nights under shelling. Her house has taken severe hits, but unlike others, it's still standing. And she is maintaining her spirit. I am holding on. Our life was always modest, but it wasn't bad. I pray to God that all this is over soon. Halina survived World War II as a toddler. Now at 80, she plans to survive this war as well. US President Joe Biden has revived a Second World War program to speed up weapons shipments to Ukraine. He signed a new version of the Lend-Lease Act, which was previously used to supply weapons to the Soviet Union and other allies in their fight against Nazi Germany. He said Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine was once more bringing wanton destruction of Europe. U.S. lawmakers are proposing nearly $40 billion in additional aid for Ukraine. Frank Lewich was a British military intelligence officer and lectures in law and strategy at the University of Portsmouth. Frank. Ukraine could soon be getting a hold of a lot more military assistance and aid. How important is this Lend-Lease Act for Kiev? Well, good morning, Ben. Let's put this into context. The Russian defence budget in dollars last year into this year is about $67 billion. So Ukraine is going to be getting about $25 billion in military aid. And by the way, defence budget also includes things like pensions. But this is all in equipment and kit. The answer to your question directly is this is potentially, provided it's continued and provided Europe also takes up its slack, a war winner for Ukraine, as it was for the, for the West in the Second World War. It's absolutely critical. And we see the effects now in combat uh, on the battlefield. Uh, how so is, is, are we seeing Ukraine progressing on the battlefield right now? Some of the artillery pieces have clearly got through. And, and one thing I think it's worth saying is that we have had some detail about the weaponry that Ukraine has received. And it's probably about time we stopped getting that detail and simply were told that the aid is arriving. But the answer to your question is, Ukrainians are starting to use the equipment they've got. Clearly, there's a lead time. 
but what we're seeing, of course, is the effect not only of the equipment itself, but of the, the support, the strategic support in other levels. I mean, even things like, or perhaps even especially, we don't know, things like Starlink, which has been absolutely critical on the battlefield. And that's not state aid, it's commercial aid, but it's been very important. The intelligence aid from the West. And yes, we are seeing an effect there. We are seeing the Russians being held in the southeast. We're, bit, we're seeing them making very limited advances, despite bit outnumbering their opponents, the Ukrainians. But both sides are taking serious losses. So are we seeing any sort of change in Moscow's military strategy? To the extent that we can tell, yesterday's rather lacklustre and confused speech by Putin does tell us that they are focusing on the Donbass. And that's because, of course, that's what they can achieve rather than what they'd want to achieve. And we're seeing, I think, a rowing back of strategic objectives from Moscow. And as Brit the British intelligence said this morning, backed up by the Americans, the, um, uh, that, that rowing back is governed by the fact they're conscious that there are limitations. Uh, Ukrainians are making significant, significant efforts to hold them, and they're succeeding. They're pushing them back from Kharkiv in the northeast. Some reports even yesterday that they retook Snake Island, which was rather rude to the Russian warship, which was subsequently sunk, but they're not confirmed. So the point is, Russians are stalling, and soon their offensive will culminate and start and to fail. Even Russia's offensive in the Donbass is going quite slowly, from what I hear. Yes. The Pentagon said yesterday they made, they've made single-figure advances. And if you look at it in some detail, they're nibbling away at, that's the wrong term, but they're, they're grinding away at, in Severodonetsk, which is a fortified city. They haven't even got into the city yet, a built-up area. There was no victory parade, of course, in Mariupol, which isn't in the, in Don, in the, in the Donbass. It's worth mentioning because the fighting's still going on then, it will continue. So they're making significant advances nowhere, and there's certainly no sign of a breakthrough, which is exact, which is what they wanted. And Mariupol refusing to surrender military analyst yeah. Frank Ledwich, thank you very much for the update there. Thank you, Ben.